the next hour, I'm just going to pray and then we're going to get into it. We're going to teach you a tool on how to share the gospel called the G7, the gospel in seven. So it's seven minutes to share the gospel with someone. So, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you are sovereign, that you are working in people's hearts and lives and you're working uh, in, this pla- in this planet on so many people's uh, lives. And it's a privilege for us to be a part of what you're doing and a part of your rescue plan for the world. And I thank you that you, you aren't just doing it all on your own. You're involving us in that process. And that's such a privilege. And so we want to bless you. We want to thank you. We want to acknowledge you as God. Uh, and we want to just ask for your blessing on this time as we, as we look at one of these tools to sharing the gospel, the G7 in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, um, those of you who don't know about the G7, you can go to the App Store and you can um, actually um, just type in G7 or type in Gospel in 7. And this here is the, the icon that you're looking for. And once it's free, you can download it and pop it on your device. If you haven't done that already, uh, my advice would be go and do it now. And then you can have it on your phone or your tablet and sort of follow along as we are doing the training today. Today's a quick start version of how to share the gospel with the G7. We're only got an hour, but we're going to teach you all about the app as much as we can in an hour. We actually do a seven week series on evangelism that covers a lot more um, uh, I just see a, a message from Andrew. Yep, if you can watch the chat, mate, that'd be great. You, you might need to text me if I miss something. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, we do a seven-week series, and we're actually going to start one of those in May. So if you're interested in, uh, if you, you like what you see in the next hour, and you're interested in doing the full course, so we're, we're covering not just how to use the app, but also the, the theology behind it. Uh, what is the gospel? Uh, how do you communicate it in a way uh, without using any jargon to people, uh, what do you do with difficult situations or people? Um, you know, some apologetics questions, uh, the keys to effective evangelism. We cover so much more in the seven weeks than we have time for today. Really, today is just like, let's go, let's teach you how the, how to use the app, and that, and that's it. So it's a uh, very much a cut down. It's a quick start today. So um, yeah. If you haven't got it on your phone, pop it on your phone now because we will be doing a practice and actually going through it today. So we're literally going to learn how to use the app today. Now, um, we know that Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's a challenge sometimes for us as Christians to know, well, how, how do we do that? How do we commu- How do we start a conversation with someone? And then when we do have a conversation going, how can we communicate the gospel? What is the gospel we're supposed to be communicating? And so uh, this is what the G7 seeks to, to help you with. And it, it, it shows you how to start the conversation with someone. It, it takes you through very, very easily how to share the gospel. Uh, and all the elements of the gospel uh, need to be there. But instead of having to think about, am I covering everything? Am I doing it all right? What, you know, have I missed something? It's so straightforward because you're reading and you're tapping, reading and tapping. So we might try to make it super easy for everyday Christians to be able to communicate the gospel in an easy way. And having it on a phone is just awesome because I don't know about you, but I have my phone with me all the time. Uh, and so when you are um, when you're out and about, you've got it. You can pull it out anytime and say, hey, mate, have a look at this. Oh, what is it? It's the latest thing we're doing with my church. It's a new app. Take, take a look at this. And then away you go. And it's very, very easy to sit beside someone, uh, stand beside someone and take them through a presentation of the gospel. Now, um, the great thing also about an app is that because you're looking at something and you're side by side with that person, instead of being confronting with that person, like they're standing in front of you and you're sort of eyeballing them and, it, and it's a bit more of an aggressive pose, body language wise, you're side by side, you're seeing what the Bible's saying to us. It's not me versus you, an argument against me, against you, my ideas against your ideas. It's what does the Bible say to us? And even when you're getting in difficult territory, like talking about sin and judgment and hell, uh, it's relating to us. It's not it's not you dirty rotten sinner. How dare you even exist? You know, it's like this is God's love for us because we are both sinners. Uh, I've done this. Have you? Yep, I've done this. Have you? So it, it's a, it's a, uh, the Bible speaking to us. It's a different sort of spirit in the way that we that way we communicate, and that's the advantage of having the app. It's a great way to communicate the gospel. 
So, um, yeah, I'm getting messages come through here. I'm going to have to keep an eye on them. Um, now, the app itself, um, once you downloaded it, there is a, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to, so I'm going to be able to show my phone. This is such a great way of sharing the gospel. It's very, very easy to be able to do this. Okay, can everyone see my uh, my screen there? I'm hoping you can. Um, I'm just going to bring out the Q&A and the chat so I can see if you've got a message for me there. I'll try and keep an eye on them. Okay, so if you've downloaded the app, if you haven't, by the way, you can still watch the session today and learn how to use it. And then uh, you can, if you don't have your phone or tablet with you. Now, this is the opening page, uh, Gospel in Seven Minutes. Now, there's two options for you. There's video and interactive. Now, the video is simply that it's a video and it plays a seven-minute gospel video and you can play it to people. Now, I know some people who actually go out on the streets and literally just use this video. They say, hey, mate, have a look at this. And they show them the video. It, and the, the video does the introduction. It does the gospel. It does the response all for you. So it's uh, super easy to use. Um, I personally don't use the video very often at all, just because I like to communicate the gospel myself personally. Um, and so rather than, um, uh, you know, just saying, play, you know, playing a video and then standing around for seven minutes while they watch it, I want to actually communicate the gospel. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to today focus on the interactive. Now, before I do, if you all put your finger on the screen uh, to the left and then push it to the right, see how you can open up the menu there. Now, you can do this from pretty much anywhere, anywhere you are in the app. If you ever want to get home, you can go and you can hit the home button. It'll take you back to this home screen. Uh, there's a read me first there. So if someone hasn't been to this training, there is a four minute overview and there's also a quick start 30 minute tutorial, tutorial video that will teach you how to use the app. So um, that's a great thing if, if you're encouraging other people to, to download the app, say go to the README first, tap on the tutorial video and watch it and you'll be away. Okay, uh, the next thing on the, the, me uh, the menu is change language. Now, this is a really amazing function that I don't know of in any other app in the world. It's really incredible. It's great for multicultural, you know, um, cross-cultural communication. So see there, it's got a, a box for viewer language and presenter language. Now, both of them are in English at the moment. But if you wanted to change that into Chinese, for example, let's say you're sharing with someone and their English is not very good uh, and it's in, in China, you know, you say, where are you from? They say China. You say, oh, okay, I'll put that into Chinese. You hit confirm. And now, instead of the whole app changing into Chinese, which is what most multilingual apps do, if you change it to Chinese, everything's in Chinese. And, and for anyone who doesn't speak Chinese like myself, it becomes effectively useless. I don't know what the menu say. I don't know what the buttons say. How am I going to share the gospel with someone? Uh, doesn't make sense. So you can keep the presenter language in English. And when you confirm that, I'm just going to just ignore what I'm doing now because I'm just getting to the presentation itself. Um, but once you get to... Uh, the presentation, you'll notice here that as you're going through, there's a narration bar down the bottom. Now, that's the words that you're going to be saying. So you don't need to memorize a massive script. Is that good news? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've been to a lot of evangelism training where you've got to memorize a massive script. And I used to do it myself when, in the early days when I was training people. So uh, instead of um, having to do it, you know, memorize a big, big thing, the narration bar is down the bottom and all you need to do is simply read and tap. But you notice there that all the, the graphic screen is all in Chinese. So the main points are coming up on the screen in Chinese and questions are coming up on the screen. So they can read it in their native language while you can still do the presentation in English. Now, how cool is that? We've got 11 languages so far and we've got four more under development at the moment. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's great. So our hope is that what, that one day we'll have more than a hundred languages in this app. And so, whoever you meet, you know, where are you from? Korea. Oh, we've got this in Korean. Well, you know, it doesn't matter where they're from. You'll be able to find their language, 
uh, pop it in there and then they can see it in the language that they speak um, as a first language. Now, I do want to point out that you can turn this narration bar off. So if you were to tap down the bottom there where the words are, see how that disappears? And you can see to the right of the screen, there's a little T, the text symbol. And that text symbol uh, means that you get the, uh, the text back. So you can turn this on and off. So once you know this presentation and once you've done it your first 30 times, say, you won't even need the words. You, you'll just turn it off and you'll just be using the, the diagrams will cue you as to what to say. But if you ever have a mind blank and you go, oh, shoot, I've forgotten what to say. Where am I? It's OK. You just hit the text symbol. The words come back and it reminds you of what you're meant to be saying. So you can you, you don't need to fear uh, that mind blank that, oh, my goodness, uh, what was I supposed to go to now? It's all there in front of you. It's literally, you don't need to memorize anything. You're just reading and tapping. We tried to make this super easy uh, for you. So I'm going to just go back to the menu. I'm going to change language. I'm going to go back to the start and um, put it back in, in English because obviously we don't speak Chinese. Now, just with Chinese and English, by the way, you have the option of, of uh, and English as a presenter language and Chinese as the viewer language, but you can have Chinese Chinese. So for Christians in China, they can use this app and, and share with people in Chinese, just like we do English English. But also if they were to find someone who doesn't speak Chinese very well, but knows English, they, you know, they can put, uh, have it as Chinese English. So with just with two languages, you've got Chinese Chinese, English English, English Chinese and Chinese English. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this is not uh, confusing things, but it's really cool. Um, you add in French, so we've got French in here. So with three languages, you've got English, French, French, English, English, Chinese, Chinese, English, Chinglet, English. <laughs> As you can see, it grows exponentially. So the options here are, are amazing. Uh, whatever your native language is, you can put the presenter language in. Whatever their native language is, you can put it in. So it's great for cross commu communication. Um, I've got a question there. Please show us what you're doing on your screen over screen, but don't know what you're doing because I can't see your screen on the phone. Okay, so to, to, to uh, do that, you put your finger on the left-hand side of the screen and just pull it away. You can do this at any time, like I did partway through the presentation. You can do that and you can go home. And the third option down is change language. And when you head on change the language, that's where you can change the languages. Um, hopefully that answers your question. I'm not sure if someone is on a phone, whether they can see my screen. I, I assume that you can. So you should be able to see what, what I'm seeing on my phone. Uh, yeah, and then you just tap on the English and then it's got a drop down. You can change it to German if you want or Gujarati or Hindi or Punjabi or French or whatever language the person is, is from. So I'm just going to keep that on English though. I'm going to cancel that and now show you how to go through uh, the gospel through the interactive version. Now, uh, under the, if you've got your phones, just follow along with me. Uh, by the way, if you forget what these options are, see the little question marks? You can actually tap on the question mark and that actually gives you a little description of, of what that option is all about. So if you forget, just tap on the question mark and it'll give you some more info. So if we all tap on interactive, um, I've already gone through a screen that had said, um, do you want to put your phone on do not disturb? Now I've already canceled that so it didn't come up, but your phone probably at this point is saying, do you want to put your phone on do not disturb? Now there's two options to do that. You can either do it by saying yes and it'll take you to your settings, or if you've got a, a, an iPhone, you can swipe down and you can hit the little moon button. Notice how that's, that, I'm just going to undo it there. See, that's do not disturb. You can put that on. And also if you press it, it shows you how long you want to leave it. Now, when I go out evangelizing, I, that, that little message reminds me to put it on do not disturb. So that way I don't get a phone call or a text halfway through a presentation of the gospel and, and just distracts from what I'm doing. So I normally select until I leave this location. And uh, that way, I don't even need to remember to, to turn it on, uh, turn it off, do not disturb. It just does that as soon as I leave wherever I'm evangelizing. So there we go. Um, let's go back to the app. 
So just, just hit skip for now on your one. And then it comes to this page here. Now there's a long version, which is about seven minutes, a short version, which is about five minutes. And there's instructions. Now we're going to go to the instructions, go through a few principles of the G7, because if we learn these principles, you will be able to have a fantastic presentation of the gospel going through. So we're just going to go through instructions. Uh, again, you've got that four minute overview. You got the video tutorial. That's the 30 minute video I was telling you about. So if you want to revise that, you can go through that. But I want you to tap on, please, the seven principles button. So tap on that and you should come to this screen. I hope everybody's with me. Uh, if, you, if not, just watch here and then I'll, I'll take you from the start again before we actually go through the presentation. Uh, so you're welcome just to watch the screen. So the first principle is to keep the angle of the diagrams optimal. So you point the screen directly towards the person that you're sharing with so that they get a great view of the graphics. So the idea is not to have your phone pointing towards your face. You've seen it before. <laughs> you're wanting them to see the presentation. So you angle the screen over so that they can have a really good view of the presentation. Okay, the second principle is that the narration bar, which I pointed out to you before, you read the words from the narration bar at the bottom and you tap the screen when you get to the second to last word. And so that you can seamlessly flow onto the words onto the next screen. Now, when you know the words, you can turn off the narration bar by tapping it and restarting it by tapping the text icon. Now, I've already demonstrated that to you. Now, there's a note here that says, make sure when you're tapping through the presentation that you tap above the narration bar to advance the presentation. If you tap the narration bar, the words disappear and some people go, oh, what happened to the words? I don't know what to say now. <laughs> so uh, you can just keep tapping and, um, uh, then, uh, you know, but make sure you tap above the narration bar. If the words disappear, tap on that text symbol, that little T on the bottom right, and the words will come back for you. Now, I'm going to give a demonstration of this once we get to the presentation on tapping on the second to last word, but just lock that in your mind because that's the one of the most important principles as we go through this. Okay, the next principle is you point your finger at the appropriate diagrams as you go through to add to the presentation. I've got a comment here. Um, can, uh, some, pe is, some people are finding, well, one person at least is finding uh, that they, they can't see my screen share. So they're asking if I can just hold it up here. Uh, it'll be a little bit hard to see there, but um, that's where we should be up to right now. Is anyone else having trouble actually seeing the screen share on their, on their device? Just send me a message in the chat if you are. Uh, I wonder whether it's a individual problem or whether there's a number of you who are struggling with that. Oh, okay. Andrew's just pointed out that if you're on a mobile device, you should be able to swipe sideways and then see the screen share. So, yeah, other people are saying they can see it. Is that which? Hopefully, it has. Oh, great. Okay. So if you're having, if you're on a mobile device and you're seeing a picture of me. You might want to swipe sideways and see the actual screen that I'm talking about. Okay, so this one here uh, just points out that people's eyes naturally follow where you point. So if you can actually point as you go through and point to different things, be careful that you don't tap, of course, because if you tap, it advances to the next screen. But just above the, the screen, you're pointing to things and it just directs their eyes in the right direction. Now, what I'd say is do not do this first principle when you first start off because all you're trying to do is get through the presentation. So I just tap at one point in the screen, read and tap, read and tap, keep it really simple and, uh, and you'll be fine. But once you know the presentation well, then you start to point things out to people as you go through. But it's only really when you know it off by heart. So initially, just read and tap. So let's go on to the next principle, number four, practice, practice, practice. We're gonna teach you how to do it today, but you need to really practice this through six to 10 times which only actually takes about an hour and then you're practiced up. Now, the reason we need to practice is we've got to get a good flow. We've got to flow through the presentation because you don't want to be disjointed or slow in your presentation. You want to be able to go through quickly uh, and easily and flow through it and sound natural as you do it. And then I would suggest that you give it a go with some people that you know. So start with some people, some Christians at church, try them after, after church on Sunday or some friends that you know 
that that know Christ. So start with some Christians just to get a good flow. And once you once you're flowing well, then give it a go with your non-Christian family, friends, workmates, uh, neighbours, uh, total strangers, whoever you're going to use this with. Um, Okay, because this tool is great for any of those groups. You can share it with anyone, whether it's a total stranger or someone that you know very, very well. Uh, excellent way to present the gospel. Okay, if we tap on next, uh, the navig navigation. Now, to tap the screen to advance, and you use the back arrows at the top left of your screen to go to a previous screen. Now, the reason this is coming up on mine as an iPhone, you may have an Android phone or tablet and it says, whoa, I don't see anything about back arrows. That's because the Android version ha already has a back button. So in order to go back, all you do is hit the back button on the Android phone and it'll take you to the previous screens. Uh, it doesn't take you one tap, it takes you a whole whole lot of screen. So it's a few taps and then you can tap back to where you were. But if someone asks a question and you've sort of gone too far, it's an option for you to go back. Normally you don't need to, but that option is there for you if you want to. Um, if you swipe right from the left, which I've already shown you how to do, you put your finger on it and you just simply bring your finger to the right. Uh, you can open up the menu and you tap home to go back to the start of the app. Okay, principle number six, does it get any better than this? Yes, it does. Uh, uh, the words and braces are responses from the person. Now, you don't answer for people. So as you're going through there, there's a number of questions that you'll answer. Don't answer the words that are in braces. They're examples of answers. Normally, it's only a yes or no. Um, and in some cases, there has actual buttons and you can press the yes or press the no. And you don't need to, to you know, second guess them or anything like that. If they say yes, you hit yes. If they say no, you say no. It's like choose your own adventure. And whatever answer they give, the app handles that answer for you. And you just keep reading and tapping, reading and tapping all the way through. There's actually six different endings depending on where people go. And it will handle every one of those answers and get to where you need to go. So um, just trust the app, press the right button and you're away. Uh, but when there is words and braces, for example, we ask the question, do you know anyone who's entirely perfect? And um, at, at, at that point, um, people say no, because there's no one they know that is perfect. So if you ask that question, don't go, now, do you know anyone who's entirely perfect? No, neither do I. And you just carry on tapping. They're like, well, thanks for asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> so we want a little bit of interaction there and that's why these questions are uh, peppered throughout the presentation we want some interaction with the person so don't answer for them Let, allow them to answer the question and then you're right now there are some words in square brackets now these are optional depending on who you're speaking with whether they've got a christian background or not you may or may not want to put these in um, so it just gives you some options as you go through uh, there's not a lot of these um, if i when you're first starting out, I would just read everything. Just keep it simple. But like I say, once you know the tool, then you can start um, adapting it, personalizing it a bit more for the person as you go through. All right, we're up to number seven. Emphasize words are in italics and emphasized. So you want to get a balance of not being too monotoned or too expressive. So as you're going through this, you do not want to, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here so um, I can see you all again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so as you go through, you don't want to have the Bible says uh, the rah, 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 and just be on all a, a real monotone, boring sound. Um, I mean, we, we don't need to be out there and so expressive and over the top. We don't want to, hey, we, we, otherwise people are like, well, what, what planet is this person on? So we want to be gentle and loving and, but interesting. We don't want it to be monotone and boring. So there's two things you can do. One is varying the pitch of your voice and one is varying the pace of your presentation or the pace of the sentence. So rather than keeping it monotone, you're, you're keeping the pitch, but you're also, uh, modulating you know you're emphasizing some words now that those words in italics uh, as you go through I'll, I'll show you them as we as we go through though the words there just help you to put a bit more life into your presentation by emphasizing those words so it's a great great way to do this um okay so if there's any questions, by the way, there's a Q&A button there and I've got the Q&A open. So hopefully I should be able to see it. 
Um, there's still a question from the last session there about, about translation. If you got any, um, uh, there's a number of people, there's some from Barbados, there's some from Indonesia, I see here someone from Tanzania, We've got people from all over the show joining today, which is fantastic, with 190 registered. Um, so thank you for coming wherever you are in the world. Um, now, if you have a language that you'd like translated with the G7, do get in touch with me. I'm going to put in the, uh, in the box again my email address. Please send me an email. I can send you a translation file and we can get that made up and you can have the G7 in your own language. So there's no cost to that. Uh, all we need is the translation and we will pay for all of that to get done. So uh, yeah, if that's something that you'd like to do, we'd love to work with you to, to see that a reality. Okay. Right, uh, Dutch, well, we have German um, in there, which is related, but not the same, I think. I don't know enough about it. But um, if, if it's different to German, um, Carla, not the same, okay. Uh, just do, do be in touch, send me an email, and if we can get a Dutch version, that would be fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again, and I'll try and keep an eye on the questions. Um, we're going to go through now. So hopefully um, uh, all of you will be back to this page. I'll actually just take you back to home again and we'll all start at the same screen. So if you're a little lost at any point, just go to the home screen. So put your finger on, on the screen, pull it out and you'll see the menu and then you can put it on. So I'll share my screen again. I'll take you through to the presentation, show you the different options and um, we'll start going through it and you can actually say it together. So, um, all right, here we go. My apologies for the delay. It does take a couple of seconds for it to come through because I'm sharing my phone. There we go. All right, so if you want to please uh, bring up, uh, tap on interactive. And again, this is, you'll have to tap skip. I've already put it on do not disturb, so I don't need to worry. Um, if you've got an Android device, you'll have a different way than pulling the screen down. Uh, actually, I think you still do pull the screen down, but it, sometimes different operating systems op operate differently, but this takes you to the settings where you can actually do it if you tap on go to settings. But if you know how to put your device into do not disturb mode, just do it manually. I find that's easier uh, and just tip, hit skip. Now there's a long version and a short version. We've been through the instructions. If you just tap on long version, there is a little bit of a difference between the long and the short, apart from the length. And that is in the long version, you can actually display a photo of yourself as a part of the presentation. So it looks like your own custom app. So I'm just going to tap on personalized photo there to show you what I mean. And you can access um, Access a photo of yourself. Oh, this has got a download from the iCloud. There we go. And put that photo into the presentation. So you can actually, um, you can actually use your fingers and go in and out there until you've got the photo in the box nicely. And once you've got it looking good, you can hit choose. Now, what that's done is it's put my image into the presentation. Well, it's actually overridden the, the last one that I had in there. But um, so you can always change it at any time. If you want to update the image, you can, uh, which is advisable every 10 years because we do change. Uh, so, but when it comes to the point in the presentation where you're going through this, it actually shows you um, the image or your image as a part of the presentation. So it looks like your own custom app. Which is pretty cool. You can put your name in there if you want, presenter name. You don't have to. Um, it will operate without doing that. And then you've got the options of skip quiz and quiz. Now, when you're doing this, um, the short version, you don't have the presenter name or personalized photo because it doesn't put your name and photo into it in the short version because it's a, a much quicker version. Um, it's about five minutes. So if you, it'll only show you the screen on the long version. Now, there's a quiz. And there's a skip quiz. Now, I'll quickly show you the quiz. So tap on quiz and then hit next. Now, 
there's a couple of options here. Now, this is the only thing you need to memorize in the whole presentation because the whole the, the, the gospel presentation is all there in front of you, just reading and tapping. But you cannot uh, you cannot read your introduction. <laughs> You've got to look people in the eyes and say it. And so this is the, the, the one bit of work that you actually have to do to memorize is this. And you've got uh, a couple of options here when you're going out, um, at, when you're using the quiz. It's for people who know you and people who don't know you. Now, people who don't know you is longer, of course, because you've got to give them more information. Now, I'm just gonna stop the share here for a minute. Um, when you're approaching someone, you can't be reading off the screen. Excuse me, can you help me with something, do you, you can't do that. You've got to be able to actually look at them in the eye and actually just say, hey, excuse me, mate, can you help me out with something? My name's Stu, I work with mainstream churches. So this is nothing weird, you can relax. You know, you've got to be able to actually say your introduction, know what you're saying and just let it roll off your tongue, uh, particularly if, it, if it's with a stranger, but even with a, a friend or a family member, you don't want to be reading off here. Can you help me with something? You want to be able to say it and know it and be confident. The more confident that you are with the introduction, the more likely you are to actually be able to use this tool with people because it, it'll just flow out of you. You say, hey mate, can you help me out with something? And it's, and it's a great line to start with. Can you help me out with something? Because people love to help other people. And so when you say, can you help me out with something? Immediately there's an interest there and people um, uh, you know, are interested in, in oh, okay, what, what can I help you with? And then you should explain what, we, what we're doing with the mainstream churches. Now, the reason we say we're working with mainstream churches is we want to be really upfront about what we're doing. Um, particularly when I go out evangelizing and I might approach a lady, you know, she's like, why, why are you approaching me? Are, are you wanting to go on a date? Are you want to, you know, you're trying to pick me up? Are you trying to, uh, what, what do you, what do you want? And so I don't want there to be any misunderstanding about why I'm approaching that person, whoever they are. I want to be totally upfront and just say, hey, I'm Stu. I work with mainstream Christian churches, you know, like Anglicans, Baptists, Presbyterians. There's nothing weird. You can relax. And I normally say that with a smile. So immediately they know we're not from some cult. I'm not there to sell them anything. I'm not there to pick them up or anything like that. There's no ulterior motives. I'm not wanting any money. I'm not wanting anything. I'm explaining exactly who I am, who I'm working with and what I'm doing. And I don't know about you, but I get annoyed when I get approached by people, uh, you know, doing a survey or doing something and they don't say their name. They don't say what organization they with. They don't say how long it's going to take. And, you know, it's just, it's annoying because you don't have all the information to make a decision. Whereas in this has all that information there. It's a really well written introduction. So, um, the two options are people who know you, you say, hey, can you help me with something? I'm doing something with my church. It's nothing weird, so you can just relax. This is the latest thing. All we do is ask you and then boom, you're into it. And if you're doing it with someone who doesn't know you, if you're doing cold turkey evangelism, uh, you can use this, um, uh, you know, you've got to give it more information. You're saying who you are and who you're working with and it's all there. Once, once you've done that uh, and approach the person now, before I start sharing my screen again, if you are going to do this with, um, uh, you know, uh, out, out and about, and even even if with people that you know, but not so, it's not so important. But when you're out and about with people, it's important to think about some of the body language things. So like asking, can I, can I have a seat beside you? You know, and sitting down so you're not standing towering over top of people in a dominating position. You want to be down on their level communicating you don't want to sit too close there's personal space issues you know think about these sort of things uh, but you don't want to be too far away and you're having to reach out with your, your you know can you see that over there <laughs> you want to be close enough but not too close that it's uncomfortable and you want to be as relaxed as possible the more relaxed you are in your introduction the more relaxed they will be they normally respond in the same way if you're so tense that you've got sweats of drop um, dripping down your face is a big vein popping out and bulging in your forehead and you're sweating and you're shaking and excuse me can you help me with something uh, they may think it's a full-on alien attack you know like they, 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 they don't they're not going to respond too well so we want to just uh, try to relax ourselves and just say 
Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. How beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. I like to quote some scripture in my mind and say, this is a beautiful thing that we're doing today. We're bringing good news to people that can affect their whole eternity. And just relax and just say, okay, smile. A great thing to do is to smile because that starts you off well. Smile at a person. G'day, how you doing? Or excuse me, can you help me out with something? My name's Stu. If you've got a smile on your face and you're relaxed, most people will do this. Uh, we were at South Bank this week. Um, I shared five presentations. Uncharacteristically, I had two people who said no. Um, I normally only get about one out of 10 that would say no. So if you're doing this well and you're relaxed and you do your introduction well, most people do this with you, which is a totally amazing that we can share with nine out of 10 people that we approach. Um, so, uh, you know, the two people, both one of them didn't have five minutes <laughs> they had to go. Uh, and the other person was um, a grandma that was looking after her daughter's baby, her, her grandson. Uh, and I think she was like, oh, well, I've got to look after it. And it's probably a wasn't such a good a scenario. So both of them had reasons. So it wasn't like, oh man, I hate God. I'm not, you know, they, they weren't rude or anything like that. They were very polite. But, and most people are, and this is a great thing to think about in your mind is most people, even if they don't want to hear the gospel, they're normally polite. And so it's, uh, you know, hopefully that happen, help, helps to, to get rid of some of the fear. Now, I know we're running out of time. We've only got 20 minutes left. Unbelievable. But I'm going to quickly show you now my screen again. We're going to go through um, the, um, quickly go through the quiz and then the presentation of the gospel. So, it's coming through. There it is. Okay. So, you said, you've done your introduction, you say, all we're going to do is ask you, and then it comes to this screen. And this is the screen that you have it ready to go if, you, if you're doing cold turkey evangelism. So all we do is ask you 10 quick questions, give you a score and analyze it. Then for six and a half minutes, I'll give you the best definition you've ever heard of what a Christian is. Here's the first one. I give to charity, so five is always, one is never. What would you give yourself for that? And then as soon as someone answers, I relax because I know they're going to go through the whole gospel with me because... You've explained what you're doing up front. You've got into it. They've answered the question. You're away. And a lot of people would put sometimes for that. I pray fives every day, one you've never prayed in your life, not even when you're in trouble. Now, note that the narration down, bar down the bottle, again, gives you what to say. So you don't need to make any of this up. It's all there for you. Just read and tap, read and tap, uh, which is awesome. Uh, and you'll have a variety of responses there for this. But it's telling you a lot about a person, whether they pray or not. Uh, help strangers in need. Um, you know, someone might say three and say, hey, look, you, you're helping me out today. I'm going to give you a four. I'm going to bump you up. <laughs> um, if they're not sure, it, it's got some examples of it down the bottom. Now, this is when we ask someone's name, because at, at this point, we wouldn't know their name. So you say, um, by the way, what's your name? Let's say they say, Bob. You put it in, you go, oh, shoot, I just spelled it back to front. Just a little joke there. Okay, so you put Bob's name in there and you put whether Bob's male, female or group and it changes all the he's and hers and they's through the whole presentation to the right um, uh, tense each time you're using that. So, uh, you know, if, if it's a male, it's in a God loves Bob. He doesn't want him to go to hell. How, is there a way for him to, you know, so it changes the he's, hers and they's to the right text. If there's more than one person, add viewer and then you can put a number of different names in there. I'm just going to put some scribble on there. So just to show you, um, you can put up to four names and it handles each person individually as you go through the presentation, which is really neat. Um, and next, now I'm just going to quickly go through there. I read the Bible. Now, this is a great indicator to see if they've got any church background. Um, they might get high for prayer because uh, they may pray as a, as a Muslim or a uh, from another religion but they may go get really low for the bible and you're going okay so they've got some spirituality they pray but they don't read the bible so it's probably not christianity so um we, yeah so let's carry on going through this there's a whole lot of questions you can look at this later um for the sake of time i'm just going to whip through and it adds up your score which is a great thing you don't need to do any addition or multiplication adds it all up and then it says your score is 30 uh you know 49 to 50 is angelic. Notice how I'm just reading and tapping and I'm just tapping on the next button. 49 to 50 is angelic, so you're not an angel. 46 to 48 is saintly, so you're not Saint Bob. Um, according to this, you're a good person, at least you're not struggling or seek help. 
Now, like I said to you before, I'll give you the best definition you've ever heard of what a Christian is. This is also a summary of the message of the entire Bible in six and a half minutes. It'd be great to see what you think of this. So you've already said that in the introduction, but you're just reminding them because you've gone through a few questions now and then they're like, oh, that's right. You said you were going to give me that best definition. And so now you're into it and you're, you're presenting the gospel. Now, the, for the sake of time, I'm going to, I'm going to go and do a demo. If, if I, I've noticed a few of you have actually been to one of my training events before. If you want to go, um, do this with me, you're welcome to. But I'm just going to go through it like I would be going through it with a person on the street um, or a friend or family member. Like I say, it's, this is not just a street tool. You can use this any way you want. Um, you just got to memorize the right introduction for the right, right, right uh, um, thing and away you go. Okay, so if, if you know the person, then you're obviously going to use that one. Hey, can you help me with something I'm doing with my church? It's nothing weird, so you can relax. This is the latest thing, and then you're into it. Okay, so um, by the way, if you skip the quiz, you just don't do those 10 questions. And I find with people I know, I don't have to do the quiz because I don't need to build rapport. I don't need to connect with them and, and get to know them because I already know them. So really for, for close family members and friends, I'd skip the quiz and just go straight into it. Um, really the purpose of it is more for cold turkey evangelism, knocking on doors, going out on the street, that sort of thing. So you can get to know people first. Okay, so are you ready for the presentation? Hopefully you are. Um, I'm going to whip you through it now. So just, just uh, put your devices down if you want and just watch and I'll take you through the presentation. Now, mind you, this is the long version. Remember we selected the long version. So you'll see when the picture comes up uh, that you put into the presentation later on. But I would advise you please to start with a short version just until you get your flow going. Uh, and so you can do a real quick five minute presentation with people. And once you, once you get it flowing, then you can do the long version. Okay, so here we go. Um, now, also note as I'm going through this, I'll leave the words on there just so you can see what I'm doing that the second to last word, remember uh, there was in that principle said that you tap on the second to last word so you get a good flow going. The reason for that is so that you can, that, that it refreshes the screen and you can carry on reading and there's not a big gap. It's not disjointed. If you tap after you read it, then you've got to pause why the screen changes and then your eyes have got to readjust to the start and there'll be a micro pause in between all of these sentences, halfway through these sentences, and it will make your whole presentation disjointed. Uh, so you want to flow through your presentation by tapping on the second to last word. What word do we tap on? Second to last word. Excellent. Okay. The Bible says that God, the creator of the universe, is holy and heaven is holy. And holy simply means perfect. In the beginning, God made people perfect to have a friendship with him. You may notice that I'm emphasizing the italic words as well. Uh, and again, that just helps to bring some life to your presentation. All of us have a body and a soul. After your body dies, your inner being lives on and God will give you a new body. We end up in heaven or hell and there's no third place. Now, do you know any human who is entirely perfect? Now, notice there, see, it's got no. So we allow the people to respond. They go, no, of course not. <clears throat> and we say, neither do I. We are all the same. So if there are only two places we can end up, and to get to heaven, we must have a perfect record, and which no one has, then logically, it seems like everyone would be headed for, and they'd say, hell. You say, well, you may be thinking, this doesn't sound right. I thought God loves us. Well, you are right. There is more to this. Let me explain. Think about someone you really love and care about. Now, this would be terrible, but imagine somebody murdered the person you love. After a huge police hunt, they catch the murderer, bring him to court, and he pleads guilty. But to everyone's horror, the judge says, I'm a loving judge. I'm just going to let you off. Would that sound right to you? And they're going to say no. Now, some people at this point, they get really animated. They're like, I'd kill the judge. You know, they're really passionate. They say, That's wrong that that person's just let off, right? And you say, well, that's because when someone has broken the law, there must be a punishment. Otherwise, there is no justice. And in the same way, God has to punish us for the laws we have broken. Otherwise, he'd be just like that judge. For example, I've told a lie before. Have you? Now, notice there you're saying, I've told a lie. Have you? So you're not just saying, have you told a lie? It's not an inquisition. We're not just, you know, trying to put the blame on them. 
we're all in this together, right? Um, so they then say, no, uh, yes. Um, uh, I've got another question there. Is the webinar recorded? Uh, yes, it is. All the webinars will be recorded today, just so I'm just answering that question. Okay, so most people are going to say yes, but again, you can hit the no button and later on you can see what it's like when in the app. You can try all the different options. The app handles any situation that comes into it. All you got to do is press the button that they do. So let's say they say yes, because that's what most people do. And we say, well, we've lied. Uh, have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? A paperclip, a pen, data, a pirate of music, etc. And again, most people, uh, I mean, I, I actually find a lot of people go, no, no. And then it gets to downloaded pirate of music and they go, oh, okay, yep, yep, yeah, I have. <laughs> and so we say, well, we're stolen. So again, we're guilty. Have you ever felt hatred towards someone, even for a moment? Now, most people have, and that they say yes, and they say, well, me too. The Bible says if we've hated someone in our heart, it's the same as murdering them in our heart. So by God's standards, we're guilty of lying, stealing, murdering, and more. Obviously, we shouldn't be allowed into a perfect heaven. We deserve punishment. But the good news is that God loves us, wants friendship with us, and has made a way possible to be forgiven. Now, I'm just going to go backwards here to show you something super cool. So when you come to these screens here, uh, everyone's obviously lied. If they say no, they're lying. <laughs> um, but let's say someone says, no, I've never stolen anything in my life. Never. And they go, no. It goes on to the hated question. And you ask the correct, let's say they say, no, I've never hated anyone in my life. You go, okay. It goes to another question. You say, it says, well, have you ever used God's or Jesus' name in a disrespectful way? Now, let's use yes to show you what this word one shows. We say, this is called blasphemy. Disrespecting the one who gave you life. And then it comes up with another question. Have you always put God first in your life? And nobody can claim to always have put God first in their life. So they're going to say no. And they say, well, I'm the same. The Bible calls this idolatry, putting anything in the place of God. So by God's standards, we're guilty of lying, blasphemy, and idolatry. Now, notice there that it's, it was lying, stealing, and murdering. <laughs> now it's lying, blasphemy, and idolatry. Now, um, whatever they confess to, and you hit the yes button for, is going to come up on the screen. It basically customizes their sins on the screen. So this isn't a one-size-fits-all. It's great. It, you don't need to, to try and convince them that they've sinned. All you do is whatever they admit to, you just hit yes. If they say no, you hit no. It moves on to another question. So that's that's a, a brilliant little function there. So we're up to the good news page. But the good news is that God loves us, wants friendship with us, and has made a way possible to be forgiven. This is where Jesus comes in a way he's so significant. He's the one who split the timeline into BC and AD. Christmas and Easter are based on his life. Imagine this. Even before Jesus came down to earth, God knew you and thought, I love Bob. And the other three people, which I didn't actually put names in for, but it puts their names into the heart. And people love it when they see their name pop up in the heart. They're like, oh, wow, that's my name in there. And it's a, it's a beautiful moment. And it's reinforcing that God does love them. I don't want them to go to hell, but they've broken my laws. So there must be a just punishment. So I have a plan. I'll send Jesus to earth as a human being to live a perfect life and to die a cruel painful death on a cross to take their punishment for them and he did so jesus died and also rose from the dead proving he is god out of his amazing love for us jesus made a way possible to be forgiven to receive a perfect record and to have a friendship with god both here on earth and forever in heaven but the big question is how do we do this by being christened, baptized, confirmed, praying, going to church, or believing God exists? No. Actually, according to the Bible, there are two things we must do to be forgiven. When we're genuinely sorry for breaking God's laws, we make a commitment to turn away from things like lying, stealing, idols, sex outside of marriage, etc. We'll never be a perfect person. That's impossible. Rather, it's a change of heart. It's a sincere desire to live life God's way. It's like doing a U-turn with your life. And we surrender our lives to Jesus because if Jesus made you in the entire universe, he deserves to be in the center of your life. Surrendering means trusting that Jesus died to take the punishment we deserve. 
As a result, he becomes the number one priority of our lives. We are forgiven for everything we've done in the past and what we will do in the future. We start an exciting journey where we're friends with God and become part of his family and his plans for the world. So this is not just about a ticket to heaven. It's about a personal relationship with your creator and living life to the full while here on earth. Of course, one day you will die. You will come before God and he'd say, welcome to heaven, my beautiful child. I love you. And you'd say, but, but I broke your laws. Shouldn't I be punished? And smiling, Jesus would say, I took the punishment for you when I died on the cross. I gave you my perfect record when you turned and surrendered to me. Welcome to heaven. Now, that's beautiful. It's amazing. Jesus has done something for us we could never do for ourselves. And that's why he's so incredible. But say you never had this event in your life. This is what it would be like for you at death. At the judgment, Jesus would say, I'm sorry, I can't let you into heaven. You don't have a perfect record. I loved you so much. I tried at least six ways to get through to you. I died on the cross for you. I sent Stu on the 24th of April, 2021, to tell you why I died on the cross and how you could be forgiven. Now, you notice that's where your picture will come into the presentation. Now, it even accesses the date on your device and puts it into the narration bar. So you don't even need to look at your watch and go, what's the date today? It just puts it in there. It puts your name. If you decide to put your name into it, it'll even put your name in the, in the narration bar as well. So you just carry on reading and tapping. It's really simple. So anyway, so I sent Stu to you to tell you why I died on the cross and how you could be forgiven. I gave you a conscience so you know right from wrong. I put some good churches where you lived. So you could have found out about me. I created a world so beautiful that it was impossible not to know that I was there. And I rose from the dead to prove that I was God and that what I said in the Bible was true. Yet you just did nothing. You've chosen not to be with me in heaven. So you'll be separated from me forever. Now, let me ask you an extremely important question. If everything I've told you today from the Bible is true, if you were to die right now, where would you go? Now, at this point, you could have a whole lot of different answers, but it goes through each person individually. You say, well, Bob, let's start with you. And if he says heaven, you hit the heaven answer. If he says hell, you hit the hell answer. If he says, I'm not sure. If he says any other answer, like, hey, I'm going to be reincarnated, or I'm just going to go into the ground, it's all over Red Rover. I'm going to become a ghost and become one with the universe. Any other answer, you hit other, and you say, I respect you believe something different, but if this is true, where would you go? And then it goes back and he's got to give an answer because we're not actually asking about people's personal opinion of where they go. We're asking about uh, where the Bible says they will go. And so you, they will give you an answer. Now, we've only got three minutes left. I can't believe how quickly that time went. But that's the presentation of the gospel. I'm just going to quickly um, put some answers in here to show you the last page. We, we go through a quick review. According to the Bible, what kind of record must we have to get into heaven? The answer, of course, is perfect. Now, the only way to get a perfect record is through Jesus when we're completely forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, can you remember the two things we must do to have this event, which, of course, is making a commitment to turn away from everything we know is wrong, not to be perfect, but it's a hard attitude change, and to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. And if you have not turned and surrendered, it's literally impossible to get into heaven, which is so sad because this is the very reason that Jesus died for you. So in reflecting on this, which statement best describes your response to the presentation? Now, at this point, people can answer with any one of these four answers. I don't believe it. I might give it some thought. I'd like to explore it further, or I want to surrender to Jesus right now. If they choose to surrender to Jesus right now, it opens up a whole other part of the app where we check to see whether they're ready and they understand the message rather than just praying a prayer with them because we don't want a, a prayer prayed. We want a disciple, not a decision. And so it goes through seven hard attitudes to check whether they're actually ready to surrender to Jesus or not. If they, uh, let's say they choose, um, I might give it some thought, they can put their email address in there and it sends them a customized email based on that response. It gives them some more information so they can uh, see more about it. If they choose, I'd like to explore it further, you ask the question, well, how would you like to explore this further? Have you got a friend you can talk to about this? Would you like to meet with someone? Can I help you? This is a great opportunity for you. You can link them into an alpha course. You can link them into whatever, uh, you know, uh, you can run a course yourself. Um, and there's an option of studying it on the, on, online on your own. But again, they can put their name, their email address goes in there. When they hit send, it sends them a customized email with a PDF 
with a lot more information about exploring Christianity. Uh, so it's a, such a great resource. I'm going to jump off now um, and stop sharing my screen because I'm out of time. You can explore those options at the end there. There's so much in this app. There's long and short versions, video and interactive. There's there's um, uh, there's uh, narration bar you can turn on or off. You can do a, the quiz to start off with to break the ice with people or skip it and go straight into it. There's an internal tutorial. There's um, uh, you know different paths that as you go through. Uh, there's six different endings. It sends a, a customized email to people based on their response at the end, which is just amazing. Because so you don't need to follow follow them up as such because some people you'll never see again you meet them on the street and that's it but at least they've got an email less than that they've got some information going to their box if people haven't got email you could send them a, a message a text or, a, or a connect with them on facebook and send them a message by messenger uh, with a link um, but it's a great tool to be able to, to communicate the gospel, whatever the setting. Um, we have run out of time and I have to respect that the next people are going to come on. If you've got some questions, I haven't got any uh, questions in the Q&A, so hopefully it was really clear. But if you do have any questions, I'm going to put my email address in the box again for you. And uh, just send me an email if you'd like uh, any ad advice or want me to come to your church or do a Zoom training for your church or anything like that, uh, really love to talk with you. My heart is to equip people to be able to communicate the gospel more effectively. Did you notice in that presentation there was no jargon? We, get, we stripped out of all the jargon. Instead of talking about repenting, we talked about you know being willing to turn away from the wrong things in our lives from breaking god's laws instead of talking about making jesus lord of your life we talked about surrendering our lives to jesus uh, instead of talking about sin we talked about breaking god's laws so we've de-jargonized all the christianese the jargon and made it super easy on on when i was out at south bank this week uh, i often ask this question i say was that clear and a lot of people goes that was really clear they often say that it was really clear like that's for the first time in their lives the penny drops i actually understand what people are going on about with jesus dying on the cross and it's just such a great feeling to know that you've clearly communicated the gospel to people i'm gonna to have to love you and leave you There is the 24 hours of prayer going into Go Month. Uh, everyone who's registered for this will send an email. So we'll send you a Zoom link. Canberra Declaration are running it. Please come and join with us and let's pray into the month of May and for Go Day that the gospel will go out and lives will be changed. Uh, the, the second thing I want to point out is on Go Day, we've actually got something called Gather and Go, which is actually getting gatherings together all around Australia and you can start your own gather and go and you can actually sign up for your own group and put your location in. Um, if you want to join a group, you can you can click on join a group. And what it does is it actually takes you to a map and oh, we've got, we've got 171 groups. It's rising all the time. It was 169 before. So this is fantastic. We've got 171 groups around this uh, around Australia. Uh, and, and different parts of the world that are registered to have a group on Go Day. And you can go to your area. So here, I'm in Brisbane. So if I type in Brisbane here, Brisbane, Australia, it's going to search and it's going to go to my area here. It's going to show you where the groups are meeting. This is in West End. This is in Bowen Hills. And you can click on the group or click on Get in Touch. Uh, and whatever, whichever one you do, it will give you the details of that group. Uh, it says uh, who's, you know, who's coming, how many people, uh, where to meet, uh, what time, all that sort of uh, information. So uh, you go to the one that's closest to you. And again, more information. And if you want to get in touch, you can put your name, email address, mobile and a message and say, hey, can I join with you guys? And of course, the coordinators will be delighted for you to join with their group and go out and share the gospel. So we're encouraging you to join, uh, to create a group if you can in your area. That would be awesome. You could be the catalyst for having a group of people going out and sharing the gospel. We've got 171 groups so far. Praise the Lord.